Okay, let me start the video this week by saying, please excuse the mess. There's not normally a hole in the wall behind me. That's normally a large mirror. We're just starting a new project. We're going to take that mirror, put it on hinges, and that'll help us to access some of the storage compartment that we had trouble reaching before. I'm looking forward to that one. I think that's going to help us quite a bit. Okay, so this video is all about changing the locks, both on the door and on the storage compartments in this imagined trailer that we live in. It was only about a year or so into owning this trailer when the key that I was using stuck in the door lock and it really stuck. I couldn't turn the key, I couldn't remove the key. So I cut the key off and I left one end of it in the lock. Luckily, there are two locks built into the door's handset. There's the handle lock and there's the deadbolt. So I was still able to use my second key and lock the door's handle when we were away for any length of time. We just were not able to lock the deadbolt when we were inside the trailer. I chose to order not just a replacement for the broken door lock, but also some new cylinder locks for the storage areas at the same time. By ordering all of them at once, I was able to have the three locks keyed alike, which means that I can reduce the number of keys that I carry. More importantly though, it means that our storage compartment locks will no longer use the universal CH751 key. Since just about everybody and their cousins has a CH751 key on their trailer's compartment doors, I wanted a unique key to keep our things just a bit more secure. I chose to order the new lock sets from a company called RV Lock because they were able to use the same key for my door and storage compartments. Not all the lock set companies can offer that. I live in Canada and even with the shipping, I received my new parts in less than two weeks. Replacing the door lock assembly was pretty straightforward. Being one of the common sizes, the new part was a direct replacement. I noticed that RV Lock uses more plastic in the door handle than the other manufacturers. The original handle that Grand Design had put in the door was all metal and it felt rigid. This new plastic handle flexes quite a lot. So much so that I can actually feel it bending a bit in my hand each time that I close the door. RV Lock also chooses to use self-tapping screws into the plastic body to hold everything together. I very much prefer the threaded holes in the steel body that my original door handle had. So removing the door handle starts with removing the four screws that hold the two halves together. This allows the inner assembly to come off. Now removing the two screws on the door's edge will allow the outer assembly to be taken away. Installing the new door handle is nice and easy. One thing that's always bothered me with this trailer, both with the old lock and with this new lock, is that we have to pull pretty darn hard to close the door. So I took this opportunity to remove a bit of material from the latching plate that mounts onto the wall. Changing the locks on the storage compartment doors is pretty straightforward. The latching arm is held in place by this one screw. Start by removing that, and then the cylinder comes out when the large nut is removed. Don't remove this black plastic sleeve.
Installing the new lock cylinder was just a matter of getting the seal, metal ring, and nylon washer each into their correct places and tightening the large nut. on the metal washer. That's a bit of a reinforcing backing plate. Then the nylon washer. And then the nut with the serrated edge Going in. working on the washer and the smooth edge out. Orienting the latching arb isn't difficult. But there's going to be some difference from one model to the next as to where the small latching arm needs to be as it locks onto the trailer's door frame. The door's thickness and the wall's thickness can vary a bit between trailer models, so you may have to adjust the latching arm to suit. I had to bend mine only a couple of millimeters and now it feels really good. I can feel just a small gap in here now that it's properly adjusted. I ran into an unusual situation on my trailer. The one compartment door lock came out easily, but then I started to wonder if something wasn't right when I wasn't able to remove the old lock cylinder from my second storage compartment. It took a bit of persuasion to get the original lock cylinder out of the door. It seems that this compartment door came with a slight error in the hole that was cut through the aluminum door panels. Rather than being a hole with two flats, it was actually a fully round hole, and this allowed the lock cylinder to rotate freely. This plastic sleeve is supposed to remain stationary in the door. So I used epoxy to hold it in place since it was spinning freely. Then I waited for that epoxy to fully harden overnight, and now the new lock went right in and is operating as it should. Looking back on the job, this was just the kind of work that the average do-it-yourself person can handle. And isn't every RV owner a do-it-yourself kind of person to some extent? It really just goes with the territory, doesn't it? Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. That's the end of this video and I hope to see you on the road. Check out some of our other videos and subscribe to our channel. New content will be posted weekly.